our lives had changed completely overnight. People mean well whenever they pity you or sympathise with what's happened to you. But really, they've nothing to do with the way, you know, why I am the way I am. Getting my diagnosis of a rare disease, it, it, it is life-changing. It was life-changing. Rare diseases are rare. There's not going to be an awful lot known about them. And who better to ask than the person that's living with these conditions, with all the complications that there are. You can't learn all that through a medical course. My name is Julie Power and I've been diagnosed with vasculitis. Vasculitis is um, a rare autoimmune condition where the immune system attacks the blood vessels. As far as we know, there are roughly about 39 in a million diagnosed with these different types of vasculitis. The treatments that are used are quite toxic and have a lot of side effects and there is no cure, but we can be managed very well on treatment. Most people, if they look at me, they wouldn't think I have a rare disease. And the only way people know they actually do have a rare disease is if I actually tell them the story about actually having it. It's important because it helps people to understand what a rare disease is, the impact that it has on you as a person, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally as well. My name is John Clark. I have a condition known as fibrous dysplasia and that results in deformity of your bones and is caused by a genetic mutation. And specifically in my case, I have on the right side of my face uh, a lump above my ear uh, down uh, into my jawline. You might be able to see it here. And I also then recently have been uh, diagnosed as having it within my chest, uh, within my rib cage and my sternum. My name is Saul Gordon David Wilden. That's my full name. And my condition is called Spinal Epiphyseal Dysplasia Congenita, or just SED. It is a mouthful, I am aware. I live with my mum, my dad, my granny, and our three dogs, Lady, JJ, and Jakey, and our fishies. And I've also got my wee brother out to I'm not sure if I've mentioned yet. As a disabled person myself and having lived that experience, it's been extremely important for me to raise soul to be as independent as possible. And that was really to align with my own personal core values around inclusion and opportunity. I want him to be able to avail of all of the opportunities that come his way to be able to live the type of life that he wants to live. I'm Lucy and this is Zoe and together we share um, a condition called Fibrodysplasia Occupicans Progressiva, FOP for short. FOP is a condition where it affects your uh, muscle tendons and your ligaments and um, slowly as you get older I suppose you grow another skeleton over what you have so your muscle slowly turns to bone. Lucy and I are uh, one in two billion. We are super rare, even though we don't really we don't really feel that we are. Whenever you go to the hospital, you want the doctor or whoever it is you're going to see to help you. When you have a rare disease, that's really highly unlikely. There was one time I went to the the hospital and the doctor actually thought I made it up. I was so embarrassed, not on my part really, more so for his actions and. It, I find it extremely difficult going to the doctors. I like I would I don't know, I would have to be probably dying. That's all right. Okay, fine, perfect. Rare diseases are really important in the wide scheme of things. One person in 17 in our population is diagnosed or is living with a rare disease at present. That's a huge section of the population, about six percent of the population. And we know that although each rare disease by definition, is less than one in 2,000 in the population. There are many thousands of rare diseases. There's about 8,000 of them that we know about so far. So collectively, all together, they say common things are common, but rare things are even more common. We are learning a lot about regular medicine, about how the body works, about treatments that might work for lots and lots of even common conditions by studying rare diseases, because rare diseases are our window into how the body works.
These are things that are delivering real value for patients right across the whole spectrum, not just the one in 17, but everyone else. So rare diseases are, they're, they're important for us to know about and rare disease patients are important for us to look after and to care for and to understand and to remind ourselves that they're members of our society and they're contributing a great deal. What is worrying for me though on the research for rare disease is that you're working on conditions that are rare worldwide, so you're working on niche mechanisms. So you need to keep the network of researchers communicating with each other on the different knowledge on, on the rare diseases. And when you want to reach a clinical trial, you need to make sure that you are communicating, working together with different centers worldwide to recruit all the different patients that are affected by those conditions and make sure that the connection stays here, that you don't, don't stop at the border there. And because you're working on rare conditions, uh, so you need to work worldwide, this will involve the need of money to be able to finance the uh, clinical research there and to make sure that you will find a therapeutic uh, target strategy and bring them to the patients. I think there's a danger that you come to see that as a society that we regard rare disease as, as something of a luxury when it comes to trying to fix it. I don't see it that way. Um, I see it as a question of, of identity. Sometimes looking at the world, you might, you might think, are, are we a, a people who will climb over each other's backs to, to win the last scrap of a, of a broken world? Or are we a people who would look the problems in the eye and work together to try to fix them and find solutions to them? If trying to find a solution to rare diseases is not part of who we are, if that's not worthy of our efforts, if that's not a compelling need, then what are we doing here? You know, really, who, who are we if that's not important to us? The thing that gives me hope for the future is access to new medicines, new medicines that will be coming down the line um, that would have less side effects. For me personally, if I was able to come off my medication, that would be absolutely brilliant. Living with a rare disease, it took me a wee while to realise that I was living with a rare disease. I realised that there were things that I just wouldn't be able to do, that I couldn't do. And there's no point in worrying about that. I'll never have the, you know, like the, the normal, normal life, but I have a very full life, a very a good quality of life.